great. So. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 15th episode, I believe, of Second Sons, which shows that we are a quite consistent video cast. Uh, as always, I am Roy Rogers, even if I'm half asleep. Oh, oh, it's now playing to me, so I know we're live. Yeah, okay. Roy, Roy is whining because he doesn't have to teach tomorrow, unlike the rest of us. Yeah, that's true. Well, I am, this is the first episode from my full-time relocation to Philadelphia, and with me today is uh, Chris, uh, North American champion Schoenthal. How are you doing today, Chris? Uh, trying not to barf on air. Because uh, yeah. you're watching a Giants game? For context. <laughs> Giants-Mets wildcard game is the top of the ninth. There's no score. Both starting pitchers threw phenomenally today. And uh, yeah, just trying not to puke my lungs out. I've Everyone watched baseball animes. I watch baseball animes, and I've no <laughs> clue what you're saying. <laughs> I didn't even know that word. Yeah. So Sid, are you as worked up about the Giants game as Chris is? I am. I'm trying to contain it. I'm kind of like looking over. It's right here, just off screen, and um, I'm trying to contain it. But yeah, I'm pretty pretty uh, tense right now. But I have total faith that they'll win. Total. So faith. if one of us starts screaming or swearing or cheering, you'll know. Yeah, why? Because it's an even year. <laughs> that's right that's right it's math yeah. guys math says we win so the only new yorker left on this cast is returning grumpy snarky guy aaron glazer how are you doing today aaron i'm good i'm playing games on my phone <laughs> at least he's not snapchatting with students okay i don't snapchat with students <laughs> snapchat with former students <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. And then last, but absolutely not least, coming off his second place finish at uh, the Nordic Nationals is Buzz. How are you doing today, Buzz? Very bad. I'm sick, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'd be sick after that performance, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, but I, but I heard you were watching Luke Cage, so you can't be feeling that bad. Sure that's you can. Out. And now he's not really a man after watching that show. <laughs> I just saw the uh, episode where Method Man makes an no. appearance. Okay, good. Don't spoil things. Yeah, that's not really a spoiler. No, uh, it's not. I don't actually care about Method Man either. He's probably my least favorite Wu-Tang member. You gotta have a least favorite Wu-Tang member, right? Uh, so, Buzz, this is sort of going to be our first topic then, is how did Nordic Nationals go for, those, for everybody who didn't watch the stream, like a few people sitting here or a few people in chat so how did nordic nationals go because you were both a player and an organizer right yeah so, um so it went great <laughs> yeah that's against ffg rules yeah um yeah it went <laughs> it, it went great actually we uh, are very happy with the event a little bit lower participation than we thought we would have and um, but was the same month as Varberg. People didn't, didn't want to travel as much, so. <laughs> Varberg is clearly better than a trip to America. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm yes. not arguing. I'm just noting how accurate that is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we we're super happy. Um. So how did your how did your tournament go, Buzz? What did you play? Yeah. What did you play? Yeah. That's the. Um. Yeah. So. I, my plan was to not play, and the day before, one of my friends, Christian, uh, he said he didn't want to play and want to help with the event. And I said, oh great, you can help me in the cafeteria. He was like, what? You're not going to play? <clears throat> and so, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I have the time. So, it's sure. Cafeteria, does that mean you were going to cook? No, a cafeteria for us, it's a, you can buy coffee and snacks and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know like what it, that like means in, in... Same thing. No, I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah, cafe. It's a cafe. Yeah. It's a cafe, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Sweden, we say cafeteria to, to a cafe, cafe basically. Um, but uh, he convinced me to... Uh, give him more of the load, and I should play instead. So I uh, and I checked out um, Bambi's Night's Watch Wolf deck before. Thought it looked fun. I played the Night's Watch line that um, Sam gave me the tournament before. 
They plays the same, I think, and quite similar in style. So I neck deck that, changed some cards, and so got the bad went okay. Um, went okay in the Swiss. Uh, final uh, top of Swiss match was me and Jacob, and uh, we both played the same deck. So I think the <laughs> so, deck's like, quite good. Before, 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 before we talk about what happened with you in the cut, we need to talk about the big scandal of that <laughs> tournament, which was when you violated, Buzz, what you said on this show, which is that you would never, ever use tokens for any form of non-official <laughs> written-on-a-card gameplay, which is when yeah. Buzz allowed Jakob to use a... Because they had the exact same sleeves, right? You and Bu uh, you and both had the same... Uh, what? What we had the same. Well, I borrowed. I didn't have a sleeve deck, so I borrowed <laughs> sleeves from him. So we had the same deck, the same sleeves, everything, and he was quite concerned. Uh, and since you're both stealing each other's characters, <laughs> yeah, we steal the characters back and forth and stuff like that. So, uh, and I was so tired. I, I was just thinking, oh shit, the the Netrunner stream is wrong. Blah blah blah. I had to have to set up the conquest stream after this game, blah blah blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I I I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Well, according to James Wamsley, you still screwed up a Winterfeld Stewart. So Yep. <laughs> yep. What were you gonna but say? We we, we oh, changed the they changed the uh they've changed the tournament rules since Andreas said that. They've yep. added that new thing about the open, derived, and uh, whatever the other category is, information. I guess hidden. Made, wait, are you just hidden. making shit up now? No. Nope. Nope. He's I didn't even know, hear about this. It's true. It's an Can FAQ. Confirm. Okay. I have well, no actually... idea. I haven't read it. It was too long, so right. I have no idea what so, it means. But uh, there, there are now three types of information in the game. Open, in the sense of, you know, like, your discard pile is open information. Any player can check it at any time. doesn't oh, require cool. to... Doesn't require tokens, power tokens, anything like that. Then there's derived information, and that is, well, okay, which is, for example, what the score of the Giants game is, but also strength modifiers and shit. Strength modifiers, uh, ownership of cards, uh, things like that. And you're allowed to use tokens and other remembering memory aids on cards for that. So you can now put a officially put a dice to say, oh. Eddard is now seven strength because of Winterfell or whatever. Oh, that's and gonna then, be annoying. You gotta use a die for every goddamn you don't card. You have to use it. It's you the don't... wild, wild west for tokens now. The wild, you don't wild west. Anything have goes. To use it. Yes, and only on your own cards, right? Because correct. Only your own yes. cards or cards that you cards you control. Okay. So you I, can... I stopped listening, but go ahead. And then there's hidden information, which is information you never have to give to another player, and you are allowed to lie about that information now. Officially. How many car how many cards in hand is is open, open information. information, but yeah. what's in your hand is, well, is yeah, right. no, no shit. Right. Do but, you have a foot to the sword? Yes. No, but, but in <laughs> yes, situations like if they looked at your hand with scene of flames, you're not obligated to tell them, you know, oh, do you still have that put to the sword in your hand, or did you know, I don't know. <laughs> That kind of stuff. So, you, but you are now allowed to use tokens. So, to what what Nymeria stole or what Nymeria's icon is, all that kind of stuff can now be used with tokens or dice, officially under wow. FFGs. Wow, that was cool. really boring, Roy. Thanks for that whole explanation. <laughs> Love you too, Aaron. <laughs> totally <laughs> insane. It doesn't say tokens. It just says you have you have to be able to indicate it, and you have to it has to be clear. Correct. So you can so you can write letters to yourself. Yes, you can you can sit and write. Uh, love poems to your cards. That's Dear awesome. Nymeria, how much you have won games for me. You wow. stole the title. You are not a fucking poet. I can see why I was with you. <laughs> yeah, pretty I, bad. I don't know. <laughs> I, I barely passed high school English, and so... Dude, don't brag about that. High school is so fucking easy. <laughs> it really is. It is. Uh, My class. Uh, I teach the college old stuff, so it's a lot of work, but if you do it, it's easy. Um, yeah. It's just school in general. What other throwing shit? Hey, Buzz, how'd you fuck up in the finals? <laughs> you yeah, mean, why are you not coming which, in? Why aren't you coming to world now? You failed us. Well, you failed us. I have to admit that I wouldn't have gone to worlds even if I won, I think. 
Um, Excuses. So <laughs> we have we have booked a big gig uh, then, so it's better for the what Nordics that Excuse that two pep won anyway. Is that your what? your uh, your emo band? Your emo band uh, booked a big what? gig that weekend? <laughs> uh, no, it's our big oh. clients. <laughs> oh, got it. No, but um, I I played so bad in the Swiss. I uh, I think that after the Swiss was concluded, I I said on the forums that um, I was carried by the deck, and I think I was during the cut as well. Um. I made mistakes all day in the Swiss, made mistakes all day in the cut, and I lost the game several times over due to mistakes. Which I think. were? Can you be a little specific? The big one was the last turn, I think. Um, I, I was just standing my cards, and instead of standing Varys, I stood Eddard, Um if I would have had one more in standing Intrigaic on the next turn, I would have gotten Varys off and it would have been a game again with him on 14 against my 9 or 10 or something. And I had a big hand, I had more economy, etc. So. Mm. That doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. So his, his deck... So what one... Um... Nordics was a bear, right? Was it oh, Fealty yeah. or Summer? Our Fealty, summer. yeah. Oh, Fealty was yours. Yeah. What, did, what did Summer win? Uh, summer was two of the other bears in the top eight. Oh. Laplante, right? Laplante, Laplante right? and Pontus played. Pontus played a version of Laplante's deck. I, I was playing some bear this week. Different agenda, but whatever. And it just bored me. Bear is still super boring to play. <laughs> still wins games, though. <laughs> I mean, I guess. That's right. This game, this not game is not fun. This this game is not fun enough for me to play extra boring decks. Okay. Well, this actually <laughs> transitions to our second topic, which is uh, I know, like the I'm European versus North American meta, right? Because after recent tournaments uh, that we had, people have sort of been talking about in the North American context that the meta is solved, that it is largely Lanny Stark whatever the answer is to one of those two and go around in the circle. Uh, while recently we've had a bunch of tournaments that have been won by non-Lannister and non-Stark decks. We've had a uh, Barrow one in, we've oh, had two sweet fucker. Sorry. My co-teacher is going to be out tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we're going to have, we had both Swedish tournaments. Uh, what one was won by Night's Watch and this, and the last one was won by, uh, Fielty. Barra. And then what? Yeah. Lee yeah. Targ one, right? <laughs> And yeah, Targ Summer. Targ Summer one. Summer one. And Dutch Nationals was won by... Oof, my brain is farting from too much Lanny time. something? I thought Kings it was Winter. Winter? Was it no, La Lanny Winter won somewhere else, didn't it? I didn't think that was in Europe. Well, yeah. the point... Oh, uh, yeah, Philippines. Philippines, yeah. Philippines. Right? But the point is Thank that you. in Europe, the meta is much more diverse in what's making the cut and what's winning the tournament and the perception of what's happening in North America. So the question that I have for you all is, do you feel, A, that there is a clear difference between the North American and European metas and that maybe the European meta is more advanced? Or So what do we explain this difference between the that two outcomes? So I'll throw it to Sid, who hasn't been in an episode. So No, that's true. Think? I've been off. Um, I don't think they're more advanced. I'm not even sure what advanced means when you're talking about the meta for the game. Like, like if you had taken you know, the best players in a U.S. tournament and thrown them against the best players of, of recent uh, European tournaments, they would just wipe the floor with the North Americans. I don't think that that's going to happen. So I don't, I don't think advanced. Different, for sure, but I don't think that, that, that means better at all. I mean, if you had dropped uh, a bunch of really good Lanny Dragon decks into that European meta, I, I think they'd be fine. With, with good pilots, I think they would do really well. Um, and I know that's kind of like, I mean, since Chris's win, that's kind of, the kind of North American deck right now because I mean obviously it, it won North American so right continental so it makes sense. I think the problem. I don't. Is... I don't think. I don't think it's better. I mean the stuff I saw was different and interesting, um, but 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 not better in any sense. No. We we had 
three or four Lanny Dragons at the tournament that got slaughtered all day. Who, who played them? Yeah, and uh, what did they Ry get Rybeck by? and Ooh, Rybeck's actually good. Rybeck played one, and uh, Christopher, who is also one of our really good players, also played one. So, mm. I I think so. people prepared for Lanny Dragon, uh, made sure that they would beat it, and then uh, just built good decks. Yeah, I think it's afterwards. more. It's, I think a lot of the problem is America or North America at least. Uh, I don't know why. I thinking South America, but North America doesn't really have as many deck builders. There's like a few known deck builders that build everything that's at every goddamn tournament. And like Europe has a lot more people that build decks, so they're a lot more likely to find shit. What, what do you think, Chris? As Maybe. The current... as I mean, the... Europe's just right in the swing of their big tournaments right now also, right? At the yes. end of Gen Con, the U.S. kind of goes into a lull until Worlds, because nothing's really happening here. Yeah, and we also just didn't get a card for like a million months before Gen Con, right? Yeah. All right, Chris, yeah. as the official mouthpiece of North America, what do you think? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> you, put, you put that curse on me, Roy. Uh, I mean, wow. obviously, there's some, obviously there's some confirmation bias there. Like, everybody wants to believe that they're playing against the best players and, and their area is better, whether that's true or not. Like, we don't get that many chances to test it, really. So I think I think Lucas said a lot of it that it's different, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Okay. Well, I mean, well, I'm just going to push a little bit further before we sort of move into what we're going to talk about, which is deck building uh, and plot decks. But is Lanny Dragon? Let's put this put the best deck right now. Like, is it like? And can we say this is close to Thrones gets to a science? I don't, I don't think you can ever. No, Craven came out. I don't out. think you can ever. Unless something's so far over the curve that something needs to be done about it, which you may or may not think about Lanny Dragon, but you can say about other things too. Uh, unless something's specifically like actually broken, like a loop or something like that, you can't say one deck is the deck because any given tournament day, to follow uh, a aphorism, anything can happen. Like, I mean, good players play that Lanny Dragon deck. I don't think that means the Lanny Dragon deck is bad, even. Or that meta necessarily it wasn't that highly represented in terms of numbers things happen man like you have to get lucky at some point in this game i think uh language has a lot to do with it um the u.s is big of course um but they all you all speak the same language in all the different states and uh there's a lot of sharing going on in um, in the U.S., uh, lot, lots of the good deck builders in the U.S. Uh, are from SoCal, from from New York, from Canada, and they build together. These people, uh, I'm thinking of a specific group here, but um, and they people copy these decks, and uh, the meta is salt. Um, in the in Europe, we have a lot of different languages in the countries. What and <gasps> really? And <clears throat> so the uh, the sharing isn't all that um, common. I mean, the French uh, the French has a whole different meta than the Swedes have, and the Dutch have a different meta, and the Polish got a different meta, etc. In in Nordics, we have had people from Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, uh, France. Uh, the Netherlands and Hungary. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and all the of these people have different metas. And they, they go to Sweden and they try to prepare for what they expect. And I think it's natural that it's something different, totally different. People want to surprise, people want to tech when they can. So I I just think it's natural that in the Europe tournaments there's a lot more spice in the in the deck building. Now, do you think um, the kind of the world the world stage would benefit from more like cross continental deck building, like groups and metas being more? We we I don't did know, that. Connected? We did that last year for Worlds. Like yeah. John and I, yeah. John and I looked at and worked on the. Uh, the world's winning deck, right? 
And the Seth second place deck was one of our Gen Con deck contenders that like they changed a couple of plots on. Yeah. Um, I mean, if people the the players would be better, people would have more good decks go floating around, right? But the the meta would be more solved. People would more quickly fall back into what they think is the best decks and stop uh, being innovative, right? Like mm -hmm. people might think have happened in the US. I don't think so, but we'll see in the next big tournament, which is something. Worlds. Worlds. Worlds, yeah, okay. Worlds, then uh, Red Saturday. If uh, is it Red Month away? No, 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 it goes... It goes... Thrones Toberfest? Thrones Toberfest isn't big. Okay. It's not going to be big this year, I don't think. It's going to be like 30, 30, 40 people. Um, so it goes, what, Worlds, uh, Solic, Red, Red Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. The next big three. So November's the month for Thrones, really. Right. Um, but, but also because whatever's sellable at the, at the Strat. I mean, what's Stalic's policy, actually, about legality? Are you guys going with the mm, world? Yeah. Legal <laughs> we are deck building like crazy in Sweden right now, so we contacted Remco, and he said uh, 14, we uh, 14 days um, is the okay. cutoff, but they haven't said anything official yet, So, but that's mm. what we are expecting Okay. on the Swedish side. Well, whatever is for sale at the Strat will be legal at Red Saturday, so it may be the first bigger tournament with the landing box legal, which will be very interesting. Okay. Do we have a release date at all? Uh, October, late October, November is what the rumor mill is saying. So, so no, not a release date. No, not a release date. N no uh, official. No official. Okay. We still don't have a release date on draft packs, which is a whole other thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, didn't, I, didn't they I, just prompt there to be better communication? Am I imagining things? Well, <laughs> we did recently get a conf a somewhat confusing confirmation about uh, what they're going to be doing with this battle of the trident thing, right? Which, the one thing that confused me about that announcement was, so are All-Star Championships supposed to be held the weekend of the World Championship season? No, they're different events. Right. Yeah. But I was confused because it said store championships held between November 3rd through 5th will participate in this. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. then, that was a typo then. That was, yeah, that feels like it was a typo. Let me open that up. What? A typo? No way. Yeah, store championships, I think, don't start till third week of November, something like that. Okay. We can make Red Saturday a, a really awkward star championship. We can do that just to make people be like, what? But anyway, uh, if, if there is right. more deck sharing going around, I think people will have more good decks, people will have a bigger opportunity to become better, but uh, I hope that people still try to be innovative, like Lucas, for example, in in the US. Yeah, it's amazing when uh, we're like trying to share decks, and I ask Lucas for a deck, and then he goes, nah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, w when you're part of an intercontinental, international think tank, we can't always let trolls like Aaron Glazer just like it's okay I totally I totally made the exact <laughs> I totally made the deck and then sent it to you and you were like this is like three cards off <laughs> I didn't say that. I was like very different 13 maybe yeah yeah, yeah sure because there's that there's not even that many cards in Lannister yet not yet not uh, without a box so <laughs> that that sort of leads us into what we're gonna do we each took a couple builds and instead of just giving people builds we're going to give them plot decks, and then people can try themselves to, like, figure out what should go in the deck. Like, once you have a plot deck, you should be able to, like, try and look at the cards. And instead of just, like, everyone copying the same six decks, there'll be little variations in them. And, like, the idea is that you'll have to learn to think about the game to figure out why these plots go with these cards. And as, as a little interesting uh, nugget... Um, I, I would say most people that I've talked to build decks by putting together a draw deck and then trying to fit like, kind of plots to it. Um, but one player that has a little bit of success in this game uh, named John Bruno is famous <laughs> for, for building a plot deck first and then kind of working from there. So um, not that you have to emulate John, but he, there's worse people you could kind of, as an exercise, try to build a deck like. I think. 
Does that work in second edition though? With... Yeah. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I I used you, to do that. You need in... a concept. Yeah, I, I used to do that in first edition, and then I stopped in second edition and started doing the draw deck first. Now I'm going back and forth. I usually say, okay, I want to be the Lani deck. I want to play first snow, and then I go to the draw deck, build some stuff. Oh, and then I need these uh, plots, and then I go back to the draw deck. What, etc. Go back and forth after that. Uh, Roy, who didn't do his decks. Yes, because I'm a terrible human being. It, and I'm th I'm finding my copies of whatever your decks were. <laughs> You're a lovely man, Aaron. That's why I have the plots for them. Except uh, I don't think I have a Terrell, so you might have to pull up your Dincon deck. Uh, uh, that, that's fine, I can do that in a second. Uh, Sid, why don't you give us one of your your plot decks? Alright, well, you guys feeling uh, feeling cold or warm? You want to go Lanny Winter or Dark <laughs> Summer? Oh, cold. La Lanny Winter, yeah. Okay, here we go. Lanny Winter. So, uh, I'm not going to defend myself yet. I'm just going to list my seven. And you guys just just shred it, right? Tear it apart. Figure out what's wrong with it. What could be better? Because I, I think I don't I don't want to defend every plot, right? I mean I know they're good, but you guys have to decide. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lanny, Kings of Winter. Can um, you start with, you start so, with the Winter plots? I will. Sounds good. I even have them ordered that way. So first one, <laughs> no brainer. First first snow of winter. Um, famine. Winds of winter. So those three. Ooh. Okay. Only three, and left. that is the extent. That is the extent of my winter plots in my Kings of Winter deck. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait, can we stop go... and talk for go a ahead. sec? Winds is there over wraiths. Yes, it is. There is no wraiths in this plot deck. That, we'll come there. Go seven. Okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> so that's the end of the winter plots. Then we have marched, uh, a noble cause, calling the banners, and Ferris's riddle. Okay. That's well, it. Lu Lucas, you're, you're welcome, world. Well, we'll give a second for uh, the New Haven line to go by Aaron's house. Just fucking uh, talk. I was going to say, we... did, did, just like the movies, did the L train just like shake? <laughs> that house a little bit? He's not that close to the train. He's close, but he's not that close. Uh, <laughs> Literally across the street. Uh, um. <laughs> so my question is always because. I'm not a great deck builder, but I, I have listened to Aaron and Dan and John build decks. So I always ask, so why, uh, oh my god, I had a specific plot. Why Varus' Riddle? Like, what, what's the point okay. of that card in the, in in the plot? Chat. It's in the chat if you need it, Roy. Yeah. So Varus' Riddle, uh, do you guys want to discuss why you think, or do you just want me to tell you my justification for it? I, I have one thing I like it for. I want your justification All first, Sid, right. and then everybody else can... All right, cool. Your so... Uh, Aaron mentioned, like, whoa, no, no Wraiths in a Lanny Kings of Winter deck. And early on, Wraiths was totally there. But it eventually got cut and replaced uh, with, with Riddle. Um, because I liked it just a lot better as a possible opening plot. Um, and a really good mid-game plot. Whereas Wraiths is great as plot one. And, and every other point in the game Miserable. is awful. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. You never want to see it. And... It, and there's so there's enough plots that your opponent can play plot one against uh, mm -hmm. Wraiths that it's also again awful. Um, like in in uh, in what was in Varberg. Varberg. Uh, yeah. In the final, we saw we saw Tomas really smartly play Accounting Coppers against an opening Wraiths, and I was just like I was clapping like this watching the stream because he knew it was coming. Right, the, um, it was their first game I think in in the three game series. But, I mean, they know what they're going to do. By, by, the, by the final table, you have a pretty good sense of what your opponent's playing. And I just thought it, it was genius because it made Wraiths do nothing, right? It didn't hurt him at all. He didn't need the gold. He was using his little ranger guy to get a bunch of extra gold. Um, and honestly, what the deck really wants to do, Wraiths doesn't do much. Um, doesn't do much to help what, what you want to do with the deck. Or at least what I try and do with the deck. It doesn't. And so, I, so I got rid of it. I also really like Wraiths, because when you're playing against the Summer deck, it's a really, really strong open. When you're not going to get that uh, Winter bonus anyway. Like, if they open Summer Harvest, you're just like, oh, well, I won this game. Thanks very much. Yeah. Sure, but I think Mirrors, are, or whatever you want to call the, the season matchup now, I don't think they're going to be nearly as common now than they were in First Edition, where you're like, oh, cool, I have to take this into account, because I'll see it, you know, every third game or something. 
Sure, but when you see it, it's nice to know that you have that option. I guess. It and just, I will say... Oh, go, go ahead. Like, go ahead, Chris. Your Wraiths is a four-reserve plot for the player playing Landy King's the winner. And that's not great. Like, yeah, maybe your opponent's three, but, but you're four. The advantage is not that strong. Um, so I cut it. I, so, I, I think Summer okay. Harvest is overplayed. I think... I love Summer Harvest until I saw Varus's Riddle and the ruling. Um, and now I hate it. Uh, I think That's another good reason why Riddle is good. Yeah, I think you can just that, auto win some crazy. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> but also, uh, soon we will have Valor. And for the decks that try to abuse Valor in their favor with saves, Varus is so good. So good. So, what about counting coppers? Cut it. Partly uh, also obviously. because... Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, because, honestly, if you're counting coppers, by the next plot, you're just going to lose like a bunch of those cards. Um, I, again, like I, I've been playing the deck for a while, and I've been watching some of the streams of people play, and just the amount of cards that I'm watching the Lannister player just ditch to, to reserve was just depressing me. And I was like, why, why even play Coppers? Maybe there's a better plot line than, than this, this constant ditching of cards. Um, so you have to play it tighter. Like, there's no question. You can't play it like the typical landing jumper deck that, that is going to play two Coppers, and you'll just have a mitt of cards all the time. That's not going to happen. You, you need to play a tighter game. But I kind of like that about it. Winter lets you play a tighter game. But Does that mean, that's... then, that you're not... that you've cut back on the jumper stuff? Like, if you don't have that fuel for the jumpers... Are you are you still playing all six events? Are you playing here and all? Wait, I, I know wait, we don't wait. want to keep people deck yeah. list. Yeah, we don't want to keep people deck list. But I want to know: is it still a jumper no, deck? They, they got to figure it out. It is still a jumper deck. But yeah, people because, do right. People have to figure out the draw deck. Yeah, I know. I know what. Like I said, spotlight. I don't want to keep deck list, but I just wanted to clarify that because it seems insane to me to not play coppers in a deck that's playing those events. Yeah, the, I think the strength of the Lana deck with the jumper events when you play a lot of them is counting coppers and i think that i would play it if i kept the the these uh, economy abusers um in play and yeah i i know i know your draw deck and i would play counting coppers <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear i would that. say there's, a, there's another would... couple Just... decks in the draw deck that make counting um not necessary. It's it's certainly still good, but not a necessary addition to the plot deck anymore. Okay, sure. As opposed to like early it. jump decks. Clue. Clue. <laughs> so is there anything else besides the the, the, the return of the wheelhouse? <laughs> <clears throat> I the the winds of winter. Um. Yeah. I have first. I loved the the long winter, and then I went back to the the winds of winter. Because I like the initiative more. But in certain decks, I've now gone back again to the long winter because the gold. <laughs> um, the re reserve is hard. I know. Um, and the losing of power is also. Give, give out some free information here. If you play against me in a tournament, you don't have to worry about long winter being in my plot deck. I'll never play it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's just the deck The deck itself is not a fast deck. This deck does not rush towards any kind of conclusion. And to, to knock your own power down like that, to, to give up initiative, to give up one more reserve, it just doesn't want to do that. And you don't need four. Like, in the jumper deck, three is the sweet spot gold amount. You can do so much damage with three gold out of that deck, whereas four doesn't really give you that, that, that much extra options. Like... The two-cost event and the one-cost jumper or the zero-cost jumper can often be the play to just punch a hole right through your opponent. So four, it's not as good as getting that reserve and getting to go when you want to go. Sure, yeah, I can buy that. I play so, Long Winter in other decks, but I can see why you play other decks. wins. Yes. Other so one, <laughs> final, one final, and then we're going to move on because otherwise we're going to spend all day on one deck. What right. makes this better than the crossing? Ooh, great question. Not much, but <laughs> but I'll say uh, not a great answer. Well, uh, honestly, well, I don't know if it's better. Like I, I honestly don't know if it's better. Um, I'll say that 
that the winter choke, which is granted super minimal in this deck, right? It, it's just basically three plots that might give you some minus gold. Like, that's all. Um, and, and minus reserve, okay. But even without race, you're, you're getting less out of the agenda, right? Um, but that little bit can be all it takes after a wipe. And this deck wipes the board in multiple ways. And once you get a wipe down, if you can follow it up with your winter plots, and that's kind of the idea. You don't just start throwing winter plots onto the board. You'll notice there's only three winter. The rest are other stuff to set up. And then once you get that wipe, if it's winter, 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 that's, that's really all it takes um, mm. to get the lock, right? To, 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 to put that lock down on the opponent. So um, I like that element of it being winter, whereas crossing doesn't have that. And when you're playing kind of the post-wipe game, you're not going to get three challenges. And sometimes you really just need that one first one to punch a hole through, and then you've got it. So uh, I honestly don't know. It, it may be that, that you could just swap out crossing and fix a few plots, and maybe it would be better. I hope not. I hope this deck is better. But, but um, I like it, yeah. Back when we talked crossing a few months ago, um, we said, we, we asked ourselves, why, why crossing? And the answer was... <laughs> There are no other neutral uh, agendas, except for Fealty, but then you can't play Banff, right? Right. So, I mean, I was waiting for, for Kings of Winter to just slot it into to the original Banff deck without any changes and make it better. <laughs> so, do you miss the power gain, though, from Crossing? Yes. Yes, you yes. do. And it's a, but, slower, it's a slower matchup. But there are... Um, People are better at challenge control. We have more. We have Craven. We have Martell. We have other stuff. They, you will have trouble uh, making the third challenge. And uh, the reason I stopped playing Bamf was because of Martell. And they were like, "Yeah, you have no power icons. I'm gonna win this game." And I was like, "Okay, good game." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, and I think true. I think That's the other long. houses has gotten a lot of this. That Martel did uh, by themselves. Uh, now more houses have them, so I think crossing can be more of a liability. All right, Chris, do you have a deck for us? Uh, yeah. So do we? I guess I guess we got cold. Let's get hot. Uh, so I have a plot deck for a Barra summer deck. Woo. Um, <laughs> gonna look. Somewhat familiar, but there's there's a couple spicy ones in there. Maybe maybe one spicy one. I don't know. Let's see. So uh, wildfire assault, confiscation, close call, summer harvest, calm over Westeros, filthy accusations, feast for crows. Hmm. Um, can you do the last ones again from summer harvest? Summer harvest, calm, filthy, and feast for crows. Yeah. So. Why feast? That's my question. Why feast? So a feast at five reserve is much more appealing to play earlier in the game. Like I think it's it's just significantly better when it gets that upgrade, and it fits right into the sort of Vera plan of getting power when you don't you're not really doing anything. It's kind of the, uh, the ultimate kind of dirtling deck to use a to borrow a magic term. Uh, you know you're sitting there with the chi with the painted table. And you know that can you, you can play that as a closer. You can play it mid game. It's got really good gold. It'll be you know six is a is a real solid gold line, uh, especially when you can't quite count on summer harvest completely, um, but you still want it in there. It's like another summer plot to hedge with the agenda. I mean, summer harvest is almost always going to be seven gold for you. Like if they have a four in a summer deck, summer harvest is a seven. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's that four is Varus's riddle. Right. And, well, that's a five anyway, so probably five, not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not even that bad. Um, but even then, nope. it's a three, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the plot deck makes sense to me. Calm, calm versus... Um, I could see song over calm. That's yeah, thing. exactly. Uh, I, I can filthy, honestly, I can honestly pretty see interchangeable. A, I can honestly <laughs> see a close call over over. Call. Really? So you would double up in the close call? Why would you double up in the close call? Because to me, it seems like close call. You're mostly playing for maybe the draw plus. Yeah, the, and it doesn't have summer. 
And that's that would be why. It's like a situation where you haven't gotten your red keep yet and you killed off some random character like and yeah. the, the one it. change I would make Another would be. Change. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that was, it. that was it. I would change filthy for building. I think because yeah, that's the red keep. Well, you've got the red keep, and if you're running dominance tech, which the I'm assuming is because, that building uh, doesn't, building's guaranteed to not get you a kneel unless you're like playing Lightbringer, I guess, and then you don't really want to grab Lightbringer with your building. Uh, I mean, in a stall deck, I actually really like that attachment, the zero drop one. Sticking Drunk, I believe. Sure, but the one that keeps still them melt. that turn. Like... No, but it's still, it forces them into tough decisions, and I like tough decisions. I think I would play, what's the initiative on here to serve? 3-3-1-3? Three. Three, three, three. Three. Yeah. I think I would play to, here to serve. Confiscation? Uh, and, yeah, instead of confiscation. Ooh, that's rough. I love I it. Love because I hate like... confiscation. I hate it. I despise that. <laughs> I would never play it in a plot deck ever like again. The, met the meta has so many good attachments now. Yes, and exact yeah. that's exactly why. Exactly why. Because you you take a one way one milk with your confiscation, and they put out two more, and they take one guy with ward, and you have <laughs> still only one confiscation in your plot deck. <laughs> with, with here to serve every turn, you remove some shit. You know, well, unless they just warn fine. him. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm, oof, I'm fine with that. No problem. Okay. I mean, anyway. isn't, isn't them burning a milk on Crescent the same as you taking it off of confiscation, and then you just have a worse plot? Yeah. What? You have a better plot. You have a better plot playing confiscation. Well, I guess. No, 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 no. Pewdiepie became better and better with the new Maester, right? With um, yeah, Pilos, yeah. right? I don't think he's medium. In better. The deck. I don't think Pylos is a relevant change. Like, yeah, I don't <laughs> think he's in the deck. <laughs> uh, maybe a one of maybe. Well, Might be like, one hey, of anyway, with red keep, he's like a five strength. That that's <laughs> one of my changes. And yeah, then like, Bob's a thirty strength. Right. <laughs> that's true. I think yeah. I think Pylos. Adds redundancy. Like if you if you if you're gonna go along Buzz's way of building the deck, right? Having a Pylos in there is if something bad happens to Crescent, he gets milked, or you see Crescent early, Pylos makes it not a dead plot. You if you play have... sure, sure, you play confiscate or you play a, a Pylos, but I don't think the reverse is true. Yeah. Just play three um, X House Maesters and make it a Bear Maesters deck. They're they're due for a return. Yes. <laughs> well, then, you, then, then you then you just add that that yeah, yeah, that goes on yeah. Maesters and you're set. You uh, get it all, and this Maester saves. You get it all. Oh my god! Um, all right, that's a terrible deck. Please don't play that. Please. I would also all right, that's I think of play uh, calling the banners instead of Feast of Cross. Better reserve and higher initiative, which is I think is very important in it and uh, usually run into games as Barra where you need more economy because you draw so much cards and you need to keep up with them spewing out stuff. Uh, so I think calling is so good and I do, don't want to cut any summer cards. Also, did anyone mention why close call is so good in Barra? Because there's a different reason? <laughs> like them why it's so great everywhere no I don't think it's so great everywhere because Barra especially wants to run three of almost all of their three good characters right I think that's the same reason it's good everywhere though yeah really oh, wow. like, like okay Lannister okay it's great in Bar Barra Lannister Stark and Targ yeah cool. I wouldn't play so... three in, in that uh, three of so many characters in those decks yeah, you're still one. Maybe of not it, Stark. In Stark, really? Maybe, uh, maybe Stark. Rob maybe and Stark. Rob and Eddard and Cat. Sure. Yeah, in Stark. Think, in Stark, it's more <laughs> arguable because there's a bit more redundancy because of the box. But I think in Targ and Barra, their good character count is low. Exactly. In in uh, most of the other houses, okay, you kill my Tyrion, I have five other good characters I'm gonna play. In Baratheon, oh, you killed my Rob. Well, good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually played a game last night against the Bear deck that, that ran close call, and it, that exact thing happened. Like, I, I killed 
I was playing a crossing deck. The math got weird on him, and I was able to kill Robert on the first turn with a with a put to the sword. And he his second plot was close call, and then his third plot he just played Bob again. I was like, well, I did nothing. So that was it was really <laughs> good. Okay, uh, Glazer, you got it for your deck. Uh, I mean, I got three because I got one of yours. Want me to do one of yours or one of mine? One okay. of yours. One of yours. Uh, Martel Fealty, then? So yes. I really don't want. like Martel Fealty right now. So calling, building, close call, counting, summer harvest, wildfire, march, and calm. Is that eight plots? That's eight plots because I can't count. I cut, <laughs> I cut summer harvest for calm. Sorry. Got it. Calling, oh, building, close call, counting, wildfire, march, comp. Yeah, that's seven. All right, wildfire. so why why close call in Martell? Since we were just talking about it, Aaron, I'm going to throw that out to you as the softball. Honestly, I don't run much attachment control in Martell. I just don't care. I'm totally fine just killing somebody and then close calling them out for the extra draw. Martel has become, like, a major draw powerhouse, especially out of Fealty. And I just want to see more cards. Like, three cards in the plot deck are dedicated to me just seeing more cards. I'm more interested in your choice of Calm. Uh, I, need an I need an open, and Martel tends to set up weird. Um, like, I'll, sometimes I'll just set up, like, a bunch of locations and not great stuff. And I'll need to protect my hand and try and be able to get stuff out, or I'll need to be able to protect the board. I functionally needed an opener, and I needed something with some, like, medium to high gold. And You're Calm and Fealty is basically a six gold plot. You're yep. very close to running, um... The Summer Deck? Summer Deck, yeah. 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 Um, I really, really, like, spoiler, uh, the... I don't even know what they're called. House Dane, whatever, the new ones, the Draw Guys? Yeah. Starfall Cavalry? Yeah, sure, Starfall Cavalry. They're... The new Viper is Spanishman. Yeah, they're they're unbelievably good. They're ridiculously better than I thought they were when I first started playing with them. Like, yeah, I thought they were going to be bad, but it turns out control decks really want to see more cards and, and a body that, uh, and a good body. It, it, it's not hard stalling out when you're playing Martel anyway. So I want, um, I just want more cards. And like the fealty, making them a five coster is really fucking good. So you're saying that a decent body and at least a cycle is a good card. Yeah, even the cycle is good. The, when you get when you get three sarcastic? out of them, I can't tell. No, yes, like no, everyone knew it was good, but everyone thought it was like it's like that's a little expensive for the body it gives you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't care what body it gives me. That's fucking awesome. Like I just hit eight control options every time. Like it's really great. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I like impressed at job. first because of the the cost to strength ratio, but. Uh, I've seen it perform where, very well, and it's done well in Italy, I think. Um, and they swear by it, and I trust them. It uh, looks good. So, it, I mean, the whole deck, the whole everything is built around, like, get draw going, find control options, stall, and eventually you will win because you're Martel and that's what you do. So in that in that kind of stall game is is March. I mean, I I have an idea of what's in that deck if you're playing Marched, but I wonder if that's really the best card for like a stall game that you're trying to draw out. So the deck doesn't always get down to one good character, but it very very often will take the opponent down to two good characters, just with things like Gaston and uh, what you call it, Red Vengeance. I'll pretend I know its new name. Um, but like when it's for LA. Yeah, but it, if it gets a couple of those off, even if they're down to two good characters, when you march, you're you're almost always marching some crappy chud compared to something great right. and great of theirs. And like yeah. and you can put them behind the eight ball so hardcore with this deck. Because you even, have so many more options. Even without uh, wildfire or first snow, um Martell is so good at chipping away at their claim soaks. With Gaston with, as you said, Elia, but also with the new uh, dagger, which... Venomous I'm, Blade. Yeah, Venomous Blade. I'm on the fence about, but people are people are playing one, and then yeah. after one playing, they are like, hmm, I should probably play two. So, no. 
I, I know. It, I, I I disagree with two, I like, but I like one. I like one. Yeah. Like one, and then you see it, and you're happy because you're drawing so much. But if you have, or like you run into a building, and you're like, you know what? They got a bunch of shit I can take care of. Um, and it recurs, right? I mean, it's going to come back once you see yeah. one. You can kind of keep that yeah. thing going. It doesn't machine uh, gun as reliably as in first edition, but it's still pretty no. good. Right. I mean, it doesn't. It almost doesn't need to machine gun if you choose when to use it well. And like it, if you happen to see it in Quentin, you're just like, oh heaven. Because <laughs> right. it gives strength now, right? Plus. Yep. Plus two. One. Plus, plus one. Plus one. All right. Um, Buzz, do you have a deck or are you lazy slash tired like me? Okay. <laughs> wow. I don't build so, decks. All right. Then we'll we'll throw it towards <laughs> Sid then. Sid, what's your second deck? Okay, my second deck. Oh, I'm I'm so excited. Or this is buzzes. this is gonna be this is the best. Okay, it's Targ Summer, which is horrible, I realized, as I was trying to build a Targ Summer deck. I was like, I don't like Targ Summer at all. This is the stupidest deck in the you, world. You like dem <laughs> you demanded it, too. You remember that, right? Did I? Yeah, did, maybe we, I when, did. When we first started talking about this, you were like, yeah, Targ Summer, I'm going to build all that burn in the house kneeling. Okay. Yeah. I really want to see if you guys can figure out what I finally like decided on and what deck is behind <laughs> this 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 horrible set of plots, which I think may not be horrible. All right, here we go. Are, are you guys ready? I'm going to do... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do first or last because it's all garbage. But okay, here we go. So it's Targ Summer. All right. Summer Harvest. Close Call. Attorney for the King. You Ooh. heard me right. Calling the Banners. Reinforcements. Building season, power behind the throne. What the Best fuck? Deck ever. All right, all right, all right, Sid. Um, so Sid laugh. decided not to be serious and built some cheeky. No, beer. this is serious. Tell me where my brain went, guys. Tell me. Tell okay, me. okay. Well, let's start with. Okay, wait. Pop, pause. I've played this deck. The what? builder was. No, you have. No, no. I've played this deck in Melee. The builder was Joshua Chambers. Really? Oh. I, I got a message, Joshua, because I thought this came from the deepest, darkest place in my brain. Nope. Nope. I, play, I know this okay. deck. Why okay. so what's it doing? reinforcements? Why reinforcements? Okay. Um, well, this is, this what? Dothraki. This is fucking Dothraki. Oh, yeah. There's Dothraki. Lots yes. of Dothraki, for sure. Yeah, this is the Dothraki um, deck. Oh, okay. that. I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> I, it just clicked I, in my brain. My bad. <laughs> I love the interplay between close call and reinforcements. I really, really like that 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 one plot into the other. Um, and there's a certain targ card, relatively new, but not that new, that's pretty awesome with like a one gold plot that's really a six gold plot, then is actually like an eight gold plot, if if you if you get what you want, which God. was kind of why building season is there. Um, and I just I just I like it. It's janky for sure. But I like it. It helps keep out the kind of characters you need to keep out to even make any <laughs> any sense of the deck at all. Beggar King is my favorite new card in the game. Like, of the second cycle, it's absolutely yeah. my favorite new card. All right, and so... You realize... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. One thing I never realized until I sat down at the me melee table and Yoshet said to me, Remember, a tourney for the king is a summer plot. I was That's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, well, that's what my question was going to be. Turning for the king, why? Besides the trait. Or is it just the trait? Because it's a summer plot, which with Beggar King, I mean, but it's only three gold, which makes people go, oh, I don't want to play, I want to play that. But with Beggar yeah. King, uh, and it's a summer plot, right? It's a six gold, eight initiative plot that gives all of my knights, all of them, <laughs> renown and immune Wait, to events. Is that what you're saying? What's that? All your hedge knights? Is that what you're saying? No, Jogo. Um, guys, I've got hedge knights. Jogo's a I've knight. I've got... Yes. No, yes, Jora. He means Jora. No, Jogo. And guys, knight to Jogo. No, wait, jo no fucking way Jogo's a knight. Knight to Jogo? What you guys forgot is that knight on him, any knight, knight can make a knight. Yes. Any knight can make a knight, guys. There's a pretty great attachment that makes oh, my guys knights. Oh, there's not a pretty great attachment. There's a pretty <laughs> great attachment. Oh Buzz knows. This, See, Buzz knows. this I is mean, the jankiest deck. No, no, this is legit in melee. Totally I go with knighted we'll on attorney of the king turn, and he goes twice, and he's immune to events, and he's got renown. You're crushing fools. <laughs> it's so good. So good. Yep. It's not, really, not having a power it, it's so good. <laughs> I mean, honestly, power I, behind 
thrown off though. I like it better than the Dutch yeah. national championship deck. There you go, guys. Which I hate. <laughs> yes. This deck is jank. It's jank all the way, but I think it's jank that could work. Like when I actually built the deck, and you know what? Uh, one more justification for it is this deck absolutely has to run more than 15 neutrals, so it actually makes sense to be a summer deck also. Because, no, I mean, crossing. no, no, you can't do crossing. You yeah, get, you I mean, get, uh, you get Mongo, so much gold just, on those summer You block. just told us all about it. Of course it's a crossing <laughs> deck. Uh, I mean, I just Shadow Black, yeah, it, it's just not fealty because you want Shadow Black and the draw one, right? Sure. Yeah, you need to draw cards. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what the that, that's the thing that the Laplante Summer deck showed us with Bear, right? That uh, Shadow Black, being able to run Shadow Black and avoid the fealty uh, kneeling your house card is really powerful. Because I think when I watched him play in the Nordics, he was drawing a card consistently every turn just from Shadow Black and plus the Red Keep. So I, that's, what, three cards? Yes, we Two yeah. plus one is three. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm <laughs> tired and fucking drunk. All right, so... Yeah, yes, but two plus one should not be something you have to wait, be awake to do. You have to remember what each card does. Thank you very much. Uh, so, so being able to move that into Targaryen would be really good. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm glad, I'm glad I got at least one person who, who saw the, the value in this, in this jank. All right, Buzz. I can't wait to play it, personally. So the the Dutch National Champion deck, like ran Which either one, that? one. It's a Targ Summer, but like it okay. ran either one or no Beggar King, with with oh that's rebuilding not a uh, okay good good, good. yeah that, that, that was the five position. gold one not the one gold one yeah. okay oh yeah yeah no, 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 no. that's the a very different gold. thing yes got it got it got it okay. okay moving into the home stretch which of us uh, still has decks that we want hey Roy on? you should go. Oh, I guess I should. Okay, so I have my melee deck, I guess, which is an example of a Tyrell Rush deck. Uh, oh, so okay. it is uh, Clash of Kings. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Does the, is there an agenda to this Tyrell. deck? What is this deck? Yes, it's Lord of the Crossing. Tyrell, okay. Lord of the Crossing. I apologize. Uh, Clash of Kings. Noble Cause. Turning for the King. Two Calling the Banners. Calm and confiscation. Okay, you said this is a melee deck. It is a melee you, deck. You're it's... not good at melee. There should be <laughs> at least one. Okay, there should be one. One heads on spikes. Always. Okay, well. First thing okay, you plot, well, let's... slot into melee deck. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it did, done. it did win Gen Con. <laughs> It did win Gen Con. It like, did. And it it won an American melee it. tournament. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh <laughs> Europe versus America. <laughs> oh, here but we go. Se se seriously, you need to slot in uh, one one heads and spikes. It's too good. I, mean, I, I wouldn't. It's I wouldn't good. be opposed to, to to cutting one of the the callings for a heads and yeah, spikes. Sure. I never needed. I never needed the second one. Um, <laughs> any, like I. In my experience, of course, again, John played much longer melee games than I did at, at Gen Con. He he was capable of, with, with, when John plays the deck, it's a grindy deck. Like, John grinded games out of melee with this deck. Uh, when I played it, it was a rush deck. Like, I played it straight up just rush. And that's what put me at second in all of my tables up to uh, the table that I won. And which what put me in the top eight. Um, or top 16 or whatever it was. I can't remember. 16, yeah. Uh, 16, yeah. And so... It's very flexible, this plot deck, like in melee, like you can close very quickly if you draw the right cards or if you, you know, start poorly, you can really just slow play it and then find your outs. And so it gives you a lot of flexibility there. Okay. What do you open with, usually? Uh, sometimes calling, if somebody sets up really well. Calm, if you have a pure shit show of a, of a setup. Uh, and then if you've got like Randall in your hand, or that if you know you can open uh, Noble Cause and just get all set up on that next turn and push. <clears throat> Why do you play Six. Confiscation? Uh, as a milk on Randall to beating us in testing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Like melee. Yeah, people are bad. Yeah. Well, okay. you don't want to lose to a bad player just because they were like, uh, I just uh -huh. don't. I'm just playing I mean, my. I'm just playing my Joust deck. <laughs> 
Yeah. Which means the Seth Lowe experience in Melee. Um, also, yeah. people, uh, Lightbringer, I actually did use it once against the Lightbringer, like, to slow your opponent nice. down. Yeah. What do you do against a First Snow or a Rise of the Kraken? How do you Rise win? of the Kraken, I... I did run into Greyjoy deck. You make I a friend. You make you make a friend. <laughs> uh, I I definitely I didn't run into anyone running playing first snow. And I don't think John played anyone playing first snow in a, in a U at Gen Con, so I can't really comment there. But Rise of the Kraken, Greyjoy players weren't a problem. They never got to the point where Rise made sense for them, and if mm -hmm. they did, they were trying to come back, and you could just weather the storm and they weren't able to close. And you could make deals with other people to prevent them from, from doing that. Because playing Rise of the Kraken in a U.S. melee tournament is basically saying, hey, everybody, yeah. team up on I'm, the guy who I'm just... I'm going that. for it. Yeah. I think <laughs> I, my two instant switches, then, is away with confiscation, away with one calling, and play one Forgotten Plants, and one, um, what did I say first? A Heads and Spikes. I would go to the heads and spikes, and I might cut the confiscation for Varus Riddle, actually. Uh, Varus Riddle is great in melee. Great. Wait, is yeah. that Greg had look really good plots. success. Uh, the buzz has to chat. Where are you? Wait, or, instead of that, wouldn't it make more sense to run the, uh, the Terrell plot? Pulling the strings? Yeah, isn't that just better than Riddle in general? It's mm, more reliable, Does that right? let you look at every yeah. opponent's use? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Like you, you're choosing instead of just between the three, you're choosing between like generally speaking six to nine. You don't get quite as much versatility though. Really? Why? Oh, because it only hits kingdom and schemes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah. 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 It doesn't hit anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But Vail, 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 Vail hits. They'll usually find a target. Like, like yeah. you'll have a good plot for copy with the copy plot. Don't There'll probably be a summons or a building or a copper yeah, somewhere some around there, right? Or, or even a, a calling, Conf right? Or a confiscation. Good. I mean, Which calling five things. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. but I, I think the I, I think that some of the stuff you can hit with riddles is probably worth worth the bonus. Plus, plus it has much better initiative than the other one, which in melee is super important. Mm -hmm. Don't act like you play melee. <laughs> no, it's important about melee. You live in SoCal. You're full of shit. Important when melee is played. <laughs> okay, right. that makes much more sense. I, but I, or, I think the original plotline is makes the the deck play its own game well. It mm -hmm. looks like a joust deck, but I think you need solutions in a melee deck for, against all of your opponents. And the issue with I think I think in a melee deck you need to have something to edge out the victory when it, it's too close of a game where heads and spikes is so good. And I think you need a solution for super rush decks. And then Forgotten Plants is very good. Fortified position should also be mentioned, I think. Definitely fortified position was what uh the the, the troll deck uh that Boston built that Dan was playing it, but also Britt and Lauren and what someone who actually made the top 16. I, made that. What the fuck? I can't remember who it was at Gen Con was playing, was running Forgotten Plan or not Forgotten Plans and uh, Fortified Position. But I also think um, the thing about I think the US melee tournament from uh, Gen Con that I noticed is the more successful decks were the decks that played their own game plan really well. And sort of kind of, they didn't ignore what their opponent was trying to do, but they weren't trying to do that classic first edition melee thing of running plots like Fortified Position or Forgotten Plans. They were trying to optimize and find the outs for their own deck and then take advantage of their table talk uh, to sort of, hey, play themselves down or play themselves up or play an opponent up uh, versus like, oh, I'm going to play Forgotten Plans and just sort of slow this game down until my deck can do what it wants to do. Um, like even Keb, who isn't in the, uh, you know, she's she's English, obviously, was was playing a deck that did that kind of style of like I'm just going to do my game really well, and she made the top sixteen uh, and beat me at a table. She was English, though. That's important. Yes, she's 
Yeah, yeah. She's she's English, but she's English. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you know, not you gotta keep that that yeah. Euro versus American thing. You gotta, we we need to draw a yeah. line. Yeah, we got to <laughs> Gotta she, segregate, she, right? She, she Brexited almost. She can be American for all I care. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> she did break it. That's right. Yeah. They are fired. Yes. But uh I, I, but I, I mean Luke, it's hard summer and he's now been winning. That's that's the sense that I get at least out of the, the Gen Con tournament um was that the more successful decks, and I think actually all four of the decks at the final table were all about maybe except Greg's, uh which I don't know as well as I know John's and Patrick's decks, uh and Breton's decks were about playing their game a hundred percent yeah and then table talking their way out of tough situations yeah i think the Uh, the issue that i've had with running those kinds of decks is that i I as a player uh, as a table talker has less influence over the game i think um and that's my strength my strength isn't making the best plays in melee my strength is making sure that the health of the game is even, and uh, that I can weasel my <laughs> weasel my way out of bad situations. <laughs> um, and so to to do that, I need I need these need these plots. And if I run into someone trying to milk in melee on my character, <laughs> I'm I'd rather instead of playing confiscation. Uh, make sure it ends up on a different player's character. <laughs> next deck? Okay, next deck. Uh, you do who has decks left? Uh, I have a deck. Chris, do you have one? Okay. Chris. I have, uh, we'll that, we'll I have one more. Martel Wolf, here. which I have extensive experience facing. So. Gee, I wonder what plot deck this is for Martel Wolf. <laughs> uh, oh, spoiler town. Uh, so the plot deck I have for Martel Wolf is Calling the Banners, Wildfire Assault, March to the Wall, Building Orders, Naval Superiority, yes. Heads on Spike, Trading with Fentoshi. That naval. That's right. It's got some it's got some <laughs> spice in there. It's not it's not Seth's plot deck written now, don't worry. Why so why Nate? That's so much more fun. <laughs> I was hoping you were just gonna troll. I should have signed it to Lucas. He's much more likely to troll. I love not troll. But that's okay. That's good. I love Naval, man. I like that Naval could be back. I honestly think people's avoidance of Naval because of summer and winter is slightly overblown. Yeah, I yeah. think I mean, the, the time of just playing Naval turn one auto is gone. Oh, sorry. Am I, am I screaming? Yes. You shouldn't, oh, you shouldn't well, tell to people to secret. play Naval. <laughs> Stop. Oh, naval oh, is oh, bad. Shit. Naval is Sorry. Bad. Ooh. Oh no. I didn't know that was a secret buzz tech thing no. for the guy who's not going to worlds. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's yeah, okay it's to play purpose. naval. He lost on purpose. It's he okay come to, world. to play naval. I think it's a great yeah. card. I'm just going to always open with a summer plot now. But still, it's a great card. Everyone should play it. But I like it. Like Every time I build decks now, I, I, I'm thinking about it again because... As I've been playing, I'm noticing people like I mean, uh, look at look at most summer and winter decks. Even the two that I put, just as two examples, there's three, maybe four tops of the season plots. There's still good targets out there. You can still read a plot deck pretty well and hit a super still, powerful naval. Still, Rex was his least favorite plot. <laughs> people, I mean, people I mean, again, are not expecting naval superiority anymore, and that makes it Mm-mm. way better than it ever was. I almost included it in my Targ Summer only because of Beggar King. It's just that much better. But, yeah. But I... Beggar King I would. is so much fucking fun. Yeah. It like, is. Since that came out, I've been all about Targ. Beggar I King mean, is the only reason that I've played. touched my Targ cards, and I've, I've never touched <laughs> my card, Targ cards. Never. Well, it just makes you look at so many other plots with like a, oh, well, maybe, well, maybe. And that's enough just to kind of be a little bit more exciting with deck building. Yeah. 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 I, I dig that. I dig that. I like exciting deck building. <laughs> All right. So, Glazer. Wind out of it because my, my spice for that deck was going to be the heads on spikes, but 
Buzz has talked about that for quite a while. And uh, yeah, I like heads in a Martell deck. I think it's great in Martell because of Gaston, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, uh, right. Uh, Night's Watch Steel is next up. I changed Buzz's plot deck because Night's Watch I what? Steel steel stuff. Ah. So filthy. So what's the could, what's the? Uh, I mean, you could run the exact same deck out of like four different houses. So pick one. Let's say Stark or Martell. Stark for, for our, extra steel? Because you can Stark, then warp Stark for steel. extra steel or, or Lannister. So you can like be like, look, I have gold to steal shit. Okay. All right. All right so building orders. So, Ooh, good. No. And I was going to say, so you didn't actually do what you're supposed to. But that's fine. You keep going. I actually have each of these decks. And it's, they've got the same basic plot deck with one plot deck in each. Uh, so there's building orders, counting coppers, march. Wildfire. Wait, am I, did I count eight again? One, two, three, four. <laughs> no, I didn't. Weren't you Wildfire, the one that didn't couldn't add two and one? Eng English teacher. No ability to count. Uh, wildfire, Calling, Summer Harvest, and Famine. So why Famine? Uh, because after a Varus, it wins you the game. If you have um, I don't remember what it's called, a gold steely thingy. The tree. White tree? Yeah, White gold. Tree. If you have gold steely thingy, and then you famine, like right after a virus, you've usually won. That's usually the end of the game. I don't need a second virus. I don't need anything else. I just I shrug and the game's over. Very few decks can afford to play out three characters by then, and if they don't, then I win an intrigue and I feel like in really good position. Or they play one and then you or two and you steal one of them with a ward and just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really. It's all good. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Summer Harvest and Calling are my Varus plots. Summer Harvest will almost always be able to play Varus. It could be Tube Calling, but I feel like after the first Varus, you're very unlikely to have enough cards out again to be able to get the second. I mean, this is actually a pretty good question, I think. Is Summer Harvest a better Varus plot than Calling the Banners? No. Because the classic Varus deck... Uh, no move no. from the core set was calling the banners. Does no. Summer Harvest give more flexibility? Uh, Initiative is more important. Initiative yeah, is more important. Then a second calling, yes, because usually after the first Varus, unless like something's gone wrong, it's going to take them a while to reflood, right? Like unless your deck's not doing what it's supposed to and you have a little bit of choking character steal, that second calling might not get you a Varus anymore, while Summer Harvest probably will. Probably yeah. out of this deck, I almost like Varus's Riddle, and it's also a little Nedley, as a second Varus deck, because if you've got White Tree uh, or any other income, you're gonna you're gonna have enough gold for it, and you've got that key initiative. I mean, you just can't play Varus if you're going first. You just can't do it. I mean, isn't Summer Harvest for reserve? For yeah. initiative, you mean? For initiative, yeah. What's uh, what's Riddles? Five or six? Six. six. Ah, that six. is a big difference. Six. Yeah, I might switch that for Riddle. Same I as like calling. That. Same I as like calling. That. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And um, you've, got, I you've got the reserve of seven for, like, post Varus, which is always good to have a mitt of cards after you Varus. It's yeah, good. no, that's a cool idea. I like it. I would play <laughs> a second March instead, yeah, of, instead of Wildfire mm -hmm. because... Really? Uh, yeah, because yeah. in my wolf, in my lion, well, in the, the people's wolf and lion decks that I play and change... Um, I have ways of reducing their board, either by stealing their right. Tame Soak, by varicing everything away, uh, or uh, by chomping at it with whatever, like ill in pain. Yeah, my big problem has been, I mean, I, it's probably variance. So Wildfire, it might not be needed, but like I've the variance fairy has bit me with this deck a couple times where like I've just been digging down to like 20 cards in the deck and not found virus. I'd rather play summons than wildfire, I think. I could see it. I mean, once I'm down to 20 cards in the deck, though, summons ain't really fine in it either. You know what I mean? Like, it's just sometimes you're not going to hit Varus and you... Although that should get you draw, which will help you. Yeah, I had the draw. It happened, it happened, in, three, it happened in three different games. I still won two of them. What? I was just saying, if you're waiting that long on playing summons after you've already dug that far, you're probably going to have enough gold out at that point to play Varus, which isn't normally true of summons. Yeah, that's true. Huh. 
Yeah, that's really iffy, though. And then you're probably going first, which is generally not when you want to play Varus. That, that it's not part I, like, I agree, but hopefully by that time they'll have wasted a lot of their control. Yeah, I could see that. There's not a lot of milk targets in that Stark version. It, it does then give them a whole turn to kind of save cards in hand if they know yeah. they can't stop the Varus, right? And they can be like, okay, well, if they're going to Varus, I'm going to hold these guys instead of push right now, you know? So right. it's, it's a give and take. But I, I def agree. I definitely like the no riddle. Wildfire. I definitely like the riddle over harvest. I'm not 100% sure on the wildfire. We'll see. I, uh, I might like the second march more. Especially if you're stealing guys and you're afraid that they can get them back. You can always just march their guy and another guy from their side, you know, just and yeah. the, the two march is nice for that. I was looking something up. Hey, I who won the baseball game? Giants. Hey, well, I, that's why I was doing all the yelling earlier. I saw the clapping and yelling. I didn't know if that was just a run or if it was then. That was, that was, <laughs> it was the end. Yeah. No, was no, no. The ninth and Chris then the game. too happy for that. All right, boys, do we have any final thoughts about decks then? Since sort of everyone has run through at least two, except for me and Buzz. Yeah, try building them. Send some to us, and we'll mock you on air mm -hmm. for yeah. being so far off. Uh, yeah, it would be cool if some people did try and build for the plot decks that we all presented. That would be kind of fun to see them. We will not mock you. Aaron will. We uh, other part of the group will help you adjust and see if we can make them better. Ob almost okay. certainly not true. Okay. The, so, Buzz, Buzz won't mock you with words. He'll just make a bunch of faces in the background about how bad things are. <laughs> okay. So on one extreme will be Glazer senselessly mocking you, and then the, on the other side will be me asking questions, and somewhere mm -hmm. in between will be Sid and Chris and Buzz. So that's yeah, the experience. That's that's Sid, Sid leans towards me with the mocking. What? No, mm. he leans. He leans towards Roy. I think. I no, think so. No too. way. Sid's a dick. You guys don't. <laughs> know. What? It's uh, true. Uh, don't listen to him, Buzz. You're, you're the only one who knows the true me. Sid's not part of the nice guy brigade at all. <laughs> and, uh, before I literally fall asleep on my keyboard, I have one final question. <laughs> so, what team are you on? Maesters, armies, or knights? Buzz? Maester, go. East Aaron? Knight. Sid? Armies. Yeah. NA champ? Maesters not close. I'm also with the team Maesters. I fucking hated Maesters in first edition. All right. Uh, well, on that note, we are done with this episode. There is one other quick announcement. Thanks to my new, you know, normal non-graduate student lifestyle that I'm starting, uh, podcast episodes will be a lot slower coming up. It'll, they'll probably come up in the weekends. Because uh, I won't be able to do them uh, Thursday morning because I have to be at work on Thursday morning. So uh, it'll probably be Saturday, when the, but the YouTube will still go up on Thursday. So it'll be a little slower getting the podcast episodes out to everybody, but the YouTube will still go up on a timely basis. But otherwise, I want to wish everybody a good week, and uh, we'll see you all in two weeks, so right before Halloween. Why Last are you all... episode before Worlds, right? Just one episode before Worlds, which will be pretty, pretty. Yep. Yeah, and we will be spoiling the SoCal Worlds deck on air. Yay! So show up for that. There you go. It'll be fun. There you go. I'll, let me provide it. Can I provide it? Only if you let me provide it. You should I guarantee you, you, it will be the deck. Only if Ryan will come on and confirm. No, no, no. <laughs> you That's guys not going to be a problem. Guys, we can do. You that. guys should we, actually spoil your melee deck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, I think here. I'm flying out before that happens. <laughs> you right. guys should actually hire me to fix your melee deck. Oh, <laughs> this is wait, the only way build, Buzz though. knows how to build a deck. He can build melee, not just. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's totally true. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good night. All right. <laughs>